Let's now take a look at a cone problem for related rates. A container has the shape of an open right circular cone as shown in the figure above. The height of the container is 10 centimeters and the diameter of the opening is also 10 centimeters. Water in the container is evaporating so that its depth h is changing at the constant rate of negative 3 over 10 centimeters per hour. Find the volume of water in the container when h is equal to 5 centimeters and indicate units of measure. Well, we want to find the volume. So the volume they've given us is v is equal to 1 third pi r squared h. Now they told us that the height at this particular moment when we want the volume is 5 centimeters. However, they have not given us the radius at this particular moment. Let's think for a second about all of our variables and all of our constants. The volume is changing as the water evaporates. Likewise, the radius also changes because these circles get smaller and smaller and smaller as the water gets uh, lower and lower. Furthermore, the height is also changing over time. So all three of these variables, unlike a cylinder, are changing which means that we need to find either the radius at this moment or get rid of r completely because they have not given us the radius at the moment when h is equal to 5. Now there's a trick that you can use and that you're always going to use when it comes to uh, cones, right cones like this, which is that the proportion of the radius to the height is similar all throughout the entire cone. So for example, the radius of this entire cone is 5 and the height of the entire cone is 10 as shown. Now at this moment when the height is equal to 5, the radius is in proportion. So we can create a proportion out of this which is that the radius to the height is equal to 5 over 10 because when the radius is 5 the height is 10 and this proportion exists throughout the entire cone. Now we want to know what the radius is at the moment when the height is 5. So r over 5 is equal to 5 over 10. That means that the radius at this particular moment is 1 half times 5. That's 5 over 2. Let's now plug in this information. We know that the radius is 5 over 2 when h is 5, so let's plug that in. So we have v is equal to 1 over 3 pi times 5 over 2 squared is 25 over 4. The height at this particular moment they gave us is 5. And so our volume at this particular moment is 25 times 5 times pi is 125 pi over 3 times 4 is 12 and our unit is centimeters cubed. So at this particular moment this is the volume of the water inside of our cone. At this point let's find the rate of change of the volume in the container at this moment when h is equal to 5 centimeters. So all of our math that we'll be doing at this, at this time is at this particular moment when the height of the water level is 5 centimeters. Now, we want to find the rate of change of the volume. That is dv dt. And hey look, we have a model for volume. So if we take the derivative of all of this, v will turn into dv dt. But we have something else that will come out that we don't want. It's very unwanted. If you take the derivative of h, you'll get a dh dt out. And that's fine because they've given us that h is changing at the constant rate of negative 3 over 10 centimeters per hour. They gave us dh dt. It's negative 3 over 10. However, they didn't give us a dr dt. We know nothing about dr dt. Absolutely nada. And so, if we keep this r inside of the model, when you take the derivative,
coming out is going to be a DRDT. And unlike a cylinder, in a cone, R is changing, so we can't just make DRDT zero here, which is an issue. Well, that means that we can't have R in our original model. Well, how can we get rid of R? Simple, by looking at similar triangles inside of a cone. We know that the radius 5 to the height of the whole cylinder 10, this proportion is going to last all throughout the entire cone, including when h is equal to 5. But even more than that, we can actually create a model for r, so that we can substitute in a value of h for r. Check it out. r is to h as 5 is to 10. Multiply both sides by h, we have r is equal to 1 half h. Well, that means that we can substitute 1 half h in for r, which we'll do right now. So v is equal to 1 third pi times 1 half h quantity squared times h. Well, 1 half h squared, here we have v is equal to 1 third pi. This is h squared over 4 times h. And of course, if we combine everything, on top we have a, uh, h squared times h times pi is pi h cubed over 12. And so here's a new model for the volume of this cone, excluding the radius. And of course now we can take the derivative. So dv over dt is equal to the derivative of pi over 12 times stuff cubed is pi over 4 because the 3 comes down and it cancels out with this 12. Stuff squared times the derivative of the stuff. Now we are being asked to solve for dv dt and they gave us all of the other information that we need. dv dt is equal to pi over 4. h at this particular moment is 5, so h squared is 25. And dh dt, they told us, is negative 3 over 10. And so, here we have 25 times negative 3 is negative 75 pi over 4 times 10 is 40. And this yields negative 15 over 8 pi. Let's see, V is in centimeters cubed and T is in hours. So this is the rate of change of the volume of the cone at this precise moment when the height is 5 centimeters, negative 15 over 8 pi centimeters cubed per hour.